Among the saints of the Lord, there are a small number that follow the difficult path of divine folly. Known as Salos in Greek, and Eurodivyi in Russian, the Fool for Christ is inspired by St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, where he says that the apostles are a spectacle to the world, and despite their hunger, thirst, and persecution, and even while living as the offscouring of all things, they endure as fools for Christ's sake. And endure they must, for by their very presence the Fool for Christ invites ridicule and derision. For the Holy Fool is a mysterious figure, one who instead of falling for the trappings of social status, power and wealth, instead feigns madness and acts in strange ways in order to mock the world. This folly, which some may take for mental illness or demonic possession, serves a double purpose as it wards off vainglory and hides the spiritual gifts that the fool has gained through hidden asceticism. One of the most beloved of these figures is the venerable Xenia of St. Petersburg, a fool for Christ now venerated through the Orthodox world. She is the patron saint for those seeking a spouse, employment, or a new home despite not having those for most of her life. She also intercedes for the sick, the homeless, and on behalf of missing children. Xenia married Colonel Andrei Fyodorovich Petrov, but was widowed at age 26 when he died one night at a drinking party. She deeply mourned his loss and found that the things of this world no longer had any meaning. Against the wishes of her family, Xenia gave up her home and all of her possessions and disappeared from St. Petersburg to seek spiritual instruction from holy ascetics and elders, including St. Theodore of Sanaxar, whose life also changed when he witnessed a young officer die at a drinking party. After eight years, Xenia had gained enough spiritual strength to return to St. Petersburg to care for the poor in the guise of a fool for Christ. She insisted that everyone call her by her husband's name and even wore his red and green military uniform while wandering throughout the poorest sections of the city. When the uniform eventually wore out, she exchanged it for red and green rags. People mocked and ridiculed Xenia as a simple-minded beggar. For the presence of a fool who wants nothing nor has anything to lose is a shock to those who conform to the desires and wisdom of this world. Yet she endured with patience and humility only once raising her cane in the air at a group of street urchins who threw rocks and mud at her. Xenia followed Christ's example by enduring her hardships with meekness and silence. In time, she gained the sympathy of the citizens of St. Petersburg. Some even began offering her warm clothing during the winter, which she in turn gave to the poor. She did the same with the copper coins given to her, the coins known as the King on Horseback, due to the depiction of the King on the coin. Xenia distributed whatever she received to the poor in the vicinity of the Church of St. Matthias. To one woman, she said, Take this King on a Horseback. It will be extinguished. The woman returned home, wondering about these words from the beggar until she saw that her house was on fire. But soon after she arrived, the fire was extinguished. Xenia loved children, and whenever she would pray over the crib of a sick infant, the child's health would improve. When local merchants gave her food or clothing, 
their business for the day would drastically increase. Some citizens, still not understanding Senia's way of life, became concerned that she was homeless and worried about where she stayed at night. So, a local policeman followed her around and found that she spent her nights praying and making prostrations in an open field. It was here, she would later say, that she felt God more distinctly. While Xenia made no show of her spiritual gifts, people began to notice and would invite her to their home, such as the Golubev family. One time, when Xenia visited, she suddenly said to their 17-year-old daughter, Here you are making coffee while your husband is burying his wife in Okta. Run there quickly. Confused, the girl left for Okta Cemetery and through a series of events met her future husband. On the eve of the Feast of the Nativity, Xenia was heard saying, Bake Blini. Tomorrow all Russia will bake Blini. The next day, the Empress died and Russians made Blini the traditional pancake made upon someone's death. In 1794, toward the end of Xenia's life, a new church was being built in the Smolensk Cemetery. Workers would arrive in the morning only to find a large number of the bricks already carted up to the top of the building. They later discovered that it was Xenia who late at night carried the bricks up the scaffolding as part of her asceticism. Throughout her time in St. Petersburg, Xenia lived in poverty as a homeless wanderer and yet displayed remarkable gifts of clairvoyance and prophecy. She did all for the love of Christ and became a fool in order to become wise. And when she departed to the Lord at the age of seventy-one, her grave in the Smolensk Cemetery quickly became a place of pilgrimage. People would take soil from her gravesite, only to report miracles happening afterward. When the authorities placed a stone slab over her grave, this too disappeared, as pilgrims carried it away bit by bit. Later, when the communist government built a fence around the chapel that now covered her gravesite, and also prohibited flowers, the faithful honored her by making paper flowers instead. Xenia, as one anonymous writer said, bore that faith which with all things are possible. While still living in her body, her soul always soared above this world dwelling in a living, direct communion with God. Saint Xenia, please pray for us. <laughs>